Hey guys, welcome to another video on the topic of units. But in this video, instead of talking about unit, the network itself and semantic segmentation, let's actually focus a bit on the loss functions that we use and also the metrics. Typically we use, uh, for example, uh, accuracy for metric, right? So when you do that, uh, it, I mean, you'll right away get about 90 plus percent accuracy, and we'll see that later on, on images that you're looking uh, on the screen, right? So where you have a lot of background and some objects in the foreground. Meaning, if you look at accuracy at every pixel, there is a good chance that the background uh, is accurate. So if your objects are very tiny, you'll get like near 96, 97, 98 percent accuracy. But that's not uh, what you want. I mean, that's that doesn't reflect the actual true accuracy of your semantic segmentation. I did a video on this topic where I talked about intersection over union. Uh, but now let's actually use that as a uh, loss function and also as a metric. OK, now what do we mean by intersection over union? Just a quick snapshot. OK, please watch my video if you want a bit more information. But uh, as the slide here suggests, well, let's go to the next slide. Uh, first of all, you may have heard of intersection over union as other terms like Jacquard index or Jacquard similarity coefficient. In fact, that's originally used to compare two, uh, uh, two data sets to find out the similarities between these two. And that's exactly what we can use uh, right now. Right. If you have your prediction and if you have your uh, true values, these are two data sets that we can compare for similarity. And this is basically what IOU is. And if you look at from an image processing or semantic segmentation point of view, how many true positives did you get? How many mitochondria in our example are truly identified as mitochondria or how many pixels corresponding to mitochondria are truly identified? Okay, as mitochondria, how many of those are false negatives and how many false positives divided by the area of union, put everything together and that is your IOU. Now let's jump into the code to see what we're talking about, how to implement this. And also let's compare this with uh, our standard way of doing things, right? Without using Jacquard with just accuracy and uh, regular uh, loss function and see if there is anything, any difference, right? I mean, uh, sometimes it may not make a difference but let's have a quick look at it. Okay, so let's jump into the code. OK, so first let me start by showing you the actual unit model itself. So this is the standard unit model. No tricks, nothing. This is basically as standard as it gets. There is a uh, input. You provide the input height with the number of channels, right? Uh, this is uh, and uh, there is a downscaling or a contraction path or uh, encoder path, if you want to call it, and then expansive path. And in between there are conc uh, where is that concatenation of uh, uh, you know, information or data between the layers. So this is your standard unit. And if I scroll all the way down, you see that when I'm compiling the model, we are using Adam as optimizer. OK, again, uh, I did a video on this topic. Uh, optimizers, go ahead and watch it. Last function, in this case, I'm using binary cross entropy because this is a, a binary. I mean, I'm, this is designed for a binary semantic segmentation. So I'm just using binary cross entropy, which is a great metric, by the way. Um, and uh, uh, I mean, great loss function, I should say, for uh, binary classification or even semantic segmentation. When it comes to metrics, we are tracking accuracy. So every uh, epoch, it actually calculates the accuracy. And then we are happy that, hey, I'm getting 94, 95, 96 percent. Now, is that the right thing to do? So this is our standard model. Now, if I go to the one with Jacquard, I apologize for, for the spelling mistake everywhere. I should have used two Cs. I think that's the standard spelling for Jacquard. But or you can just call this IOU. But either way, uh, we are calculating this like we are using the true uh, uh, and the predicted ones and we are calculating the intersection and then uh, dividing by the union. That's it. OK, so this is our uh, coefficient and I'm also using the same coefficient as loss function. OK, exactly using the same coefficient as loss function. So I defined a function called Jacquard coefficient right here. And for the loss function, I am defining another function called Jacquard coefficient loss, which returns our Jacquard coefficient with a negative sign in front of it. Why a negative sign? Because just think about it. If uh, if if uh, your predicted and true are very close by, you get very high Jacquard coefficient values. Right. This is nothing but intersection over union. If you get more and more intersection, the value of your IOU or Jacquard coefficient is very high. But what is a loss function? Loss function is trying to minimize that value. Right. It's trying to minimize. So you don't want uh, to go the other way. 
okay so for that i just added a negative sign in front of my jacquard coefficient so it knows that hey now i the value is increasing let's go in that direction right so let's minimize that so it's negative so now the optimizer so when i go down adam is like okay i want to minimize the loss function and the loss function is jacquard coefficient if it is minus uh, 25 let's say if it is 25 meaning 25% of overlap between true and predicted, we put a minus, so minus 25. Okay, keep going, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50, right? So this is this is what it's doing with the loss function. And while you're doing this, the matrix is Jacquard coefficient. These two values should be identical because it's just, I mean, except for the negative sign. So the entire architecture is the same between the simple unit model and the one with Jacquard, except I just defined a function up there, like for, uh, for the loss, and I'm just using it here. Now you can do exactly the same, no matter what type of loss function you want to use, right? I mean, uh, for example, if you want to use a dice coefficient as your loss function, you can definitely do that. Define a function, go ahead and use it down here. Okay, with that knowledge, let's now get into this code again. Uh, we have been using this for the last uh, few videos. In fact, two, three videos ago when we actually did the first unit in this series, uh, we we uh, just focused on the simple unit model. Let's, uh, uh, I'll go through line by line, but not in very detail because I've done that in a different video. Okay, so where are we? Okay, let's go ahead and import our libraries. First of all, let's import the two models, right? The one with Jacquard, the one without. Again, apologize for the spelling mistake over there. So we did that and all of the standard libraries to read our images, not many, right? I mean, typically you have like a whole bunch, but not many here. Okay, so what else? Uh, let's see. Uh, my image directory this is where i have a whole bunch of 256 by 256 size images and uh, also corresponding masks right so i'm defining my image directory and i'm defining my mask directory the next thing is i'm walking through each file in each of these directories looking for my tiff files and resizing them to 256 by 256 if they're not already 256 they're already 256 but this is just a sanity check so let's do the same for both images and masks and this is one of the slowest parts uh, of the code because now i'm loading thousands of images well that was fast um, so there are 1600 images and 1600 masks okay so they're all loaded but just for the testing purposes i'll actually take a very tiny part of this entire data set so i can show that to you as part of this video rather than spend you know two hours trying to uh, trying to do uh, train this model uh, so uh, my image data set, where is my image data set here? It's 16, it's a list of 1600 NumPy arrays. So we have to convert that into NumPy array. So I'm doing that right here and normalizing all the values because they're all 256, uh, you know, zero to 255 values, like unsigned integer eights. And then I'm expanding the dimensions all in one line. So I get like a very nice, uh, uh, there is it, image uh, data set, 1600 images, 256 by 256 by one. So it's all ready to go into my neural network, right, for training. Let's do the same for mask data set, okay, the corresponding masks. And for masks, obviously I'm not normalizing it because my masks all have a value of either zero for background or 255 for peaks, uh, I mean, so for, for uh, uh, objects. And if you want to generate your own masks, go to www.appear.com, A-P-E-E-R, A-P-E-E-R.com. You can do your own annotations, you can label your, uh, you know, for semantic segmentation and uh, save the masks and you can do whatever I'm trying to do here. It's free, by the way, okay? Uh, okay, so now my mask data set is there. Let's go ahead and split our data set into training and testing. So I'm taking 10% of my data for testing. Test size is 10%, which means it leaves 90%, like about 1,440 images for training. Even those images will take a long time. They're all 256 by 256 for training. So I'm writing another uh, split here, okay? I'm trying to split here again, train test split, but using my X train and Y train, I'm taking 90% into test size. I'm calling it test size, which means I only get 10% of that for my uh, for my training. So I should end up with 144 images for training. That's enough for, for this exercise, okay? But you understand why I'm doing this. Okay, so X train quick test, right? For quick test, I want a small data set, so I'm, I'm, doing, it. Uh, I'm doing this. Okay, if you look at X train quick test, we have 144 images, as we know, and 144 masks, corresponding masks. So we're all set. 
Now, let's, uh, well, if you want to do some sanity check in terms of uh, are my uh, uh, images and masks, uh, you know, making sense? Yes, that looks okay. Let's randomly load another image and mask. Okay, so we are good to go now. Okay, so nice sanity check there. So let's define our image height, width, and channel. So when we import our models, uh, you know, the right parameters are supplied. So let's go ahead and import both Jacquard model. Okay, let's import that and also the standard one, okay? The model should be exactly the same. If I go through these, like number of parameters, all of these should be exactly same. The only thing uh, difference is in how it compiles it, meaning what uh, loss function we are using. Optimizer is the same, we are using Atom for both and what accuracy metric or what metric, sorry, uh, are we tracking? Again, for the standard model, it's the accuracy and for the other one, Jacquard. So uh, I, let's go ahead and train these two for 10 epochs each everything else remaining exactly the same okay so 10 epochs each here and go ahead and save this and uh, while it's doing that let me just quickly show you a couple other things and we can go ahead and save the model uh, let's wait for it to start and after the whole thing is done let's go ahead and plot the loss function and jacquard coefficients loss function and accuracy to have a quick uh, view of what's going on now look here uh, let's expand this because this can be educational. Okay, so if you look here, uh, the loss, forget about loss, uh, uh, the Jacquard coefficient, actually don't forget about loss. You see the Jacquard coefficient is 0 0.0621 and the loss is minus 0 0.0621. Like I said, we are just adding a negative to the loss function, okay? And ideally, this, this is not good, right? It's telling me that only 6% of IOU uh, uh, happened in the first epoch and then 6.2%. Now it's 7% uh, right there, okay? Uh, and now it's actually getting up to, uh, if you see, about 10%. So it's heading in the right direction. I hope this goes up to 80, 90%. For semantic segmentation, it's near impossible to get, uh, to get uh, uh, you know, 98, 99% of IOU, um, you, uh, you know, uh, but unit actually does a very good job. You see how you're heading in the right direction? 11.3, 21.8. Now I'm going up to 34, 35. This is encouraging. I think uh, uh, we'll end up with 50% or something with for IOU, which is not bad, which is great. Okay, I'll let this, again, it needs to train the other. Uh, I wish I could parallelly train these two on two different GPUs, but I only have one. So let's, let's wait for this to be done maybe a few more seconds, but uh, let me pause this video and continue as soon as this is done, okay? I just resumed even though it's not done, just to show uh, uh, one more thing. You know, here, Epoch 1, this is the second network that just started, you know, the standard one. And as you can see right away, the first accuracy, it started off with 93.5%, right? Uh, even in the first Epoch. And on the validation data, it's 93.9% and 93.9%. And that's, that's, that's tremendously high. And we know why, because most of our data is like background and very little data is foreground or uh, the actual uh, features of interest. So you can see how our uh, accuracy is, uh, it's, it's kind of saturated even from the first step. So this is why I don't think for semantic segmentation, accuracy is a good metric. Uh, loss function is okay, right? I mean, binary cross entropy is fine, uh, but uh, uh, for for uh, metrics itself, accuracy is not a uh, good metric. Okay, so you keep seeing like the accuracy is not getting better at all. It's in fact, it's like pretty much the same. It's not changing. That tells me like immediately jumped up to you know a certain level, and that's it. That's where it's it's sitting down. Okay, uh, again, let me pause, and I'll continue literally in a few seconds. Okay, so like I said, a few more seconds, it's done. So now let's actually go ahead and plot the Jacquard, you know, accuracy, uh, sorry, coefficient and uh, the loss, right? I mean, the coefficient is exactly uh, opposite of this loss, right? It's it's minus of this. So you can see how it's, uh, it's still trying to get up there. And if I actually do uh, probably 20, 30 more epochs, this will probably go up to 80, 85%. As you can see, this is, this is not saturated at all, right? So uh, we should have actually continued this and, uh, uh, and see where it goes. Also, we are only working with 144 images, okay? Remember that uh, you are limited by the data itself when it comes to the 
the maximum accuracy, in this case, the maximum Jacquard IOU value that you can actually obtain given your training data or the limited size of the training data. Now let's plot the same for accuracy and uh, the standard binary cross entropy loss. So when you look at that, this looks amazing, right? And you're like, wow, this is cool. Even after like 10 epochs, this is uh, getting down and it's not, it's not bad. I mean, frankly, this is actually doing a pretty good job. But if you look at your training and validation accuracy, this, is, this, this doesn't make sense at all, okay? Uh, at least it's not informative at all. Now, um, let us uh, actually uh, block this jacquard first and then uh, assign my model equals to uh, my standard model and then uh, do a few calculations here. First of all, let's calculate intersection over union, right? I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, the, using the Y predict and Y test values here. And I'm just uh, uh, <laughs> I'm just uh, calculating IOU here, basically using the formula of logical and and logical R, right? And and R intersection or union, right? Uh, R is union. This is intersection. So Y test, Y predict, Y test, Y predict, and then basically uh, intersection over union, and the score is almost zero, I, which which makes no sense. But let's actually see how the test images look like okay a couple of test images i think uh, i may have made uh, yeah it is i mean i'm not seeing anything here uh, so that that kind of makes sense you see uh, uh, here is my actually one of the testing images that we actually held out and here is the testing label in our prediction we got nothing i mean the prediction even though it shows that okay we have great convergence and everything i don't see much of anything here now is that the case even for the jacquard model let's go ahead and undo that part and now assign our model to this and let's calculate our iou one more time it should be around let's see um 40 i mean we know this right i mean previously we we have used this as our loss function so we know we are getting about 48 percent or for for you know uh if I go back up, just to do our sanity check, uh, this is our accuracy, 94%, but nothing. It's all it's all the dark background, but uh, we are getting our Jacquard coefficient as about 48%, as you can see, right? I mean, whether you do it that way or you're calculating it this way, uh, it should be uh, nearly the same uh, same value. Okay, so where are we? We got about 48% of intersection over union, so right away you know that the segmentation is probably promising. So let's go ahead and do our plotting. All I'm trying to do here is randomly load an image uh, from our test data set and then uh, load an actual image uh, here and then segment it, right? An actual image that the training or testing, it's, it's coming from somewhere else, okay? And then just comparing these two. So let's go ahead and do this and that's not bad. I mean, the results are not impressive because you know, we are using only a tiny data set for training, but they're much better than using our accuracy and binary cross entropy, as you can see in this case. So uh, the testing labels, this is the ground truth, and here is the prediction on test image. I mean, you can see why this thinks that this is a mitochondria. I mean, it's almost like that, but I bet after a few epochs of training or uh, adding more data and a few epochs of training, then this will get better. Now, this is not bad, actually. This is also doing pretty good here. So now you see how you can actually use intersection over union not only to calculate the accuracy or uh, the, the uh, how should I say, uh, the quality of your trained model, let, let me put it that way, but also use it as a loss function or as a metric while you're training. Okay, so again, thank you very much for watching this video. I seriously hope you find this to be very educational and informative. And please like this video. Please subscribe to these channels because it keeps me encouraged to create more such videos for you guys. Okay, thank you very much. And let's meet in the next video uh, uh, covering a different topic. Thank you.